Here's the deal, I purchased this old manual lathe and when I got it home, I realized it only runs on three phase, which is a problem I'm sure a lot of you can relate to. Running three phase electric in a home garage can cost a fortune. You gotta deal with converters, wiring, electricians. Who wants to deal with that? Oh, there it is. Oh! So instead I chose to go the route that costs about $150 to convert this three phase 220 machine into single phase 220 and it works just as good, if not better. Stick around to find out how. So I picked up this 80s or 90s Polish American Machine Company lathe. It's in pretty good condition. It came with a bunch of tooling, work light, coolant, pretty much everything you could ask for in a lathe. But the problem is it runs on, it says 480 here, but you can do 220 or 440 and that's three phase. So I try my best if I can to not run machinery off three phase, if I can help it. If I can run it off single phase, then I don't have to hear the whine of the phase converter. I don't have to use another motor to create a third leg. So you're basically using power to create power, which costs a lot more money. So there's various routes that you can go with this. You can get three phase power ran to your building, which is a pain. You can use a phase converter, which I have, which are very expensive. They're allowed to run. And like I said, it takes a little bit more power to make power, so it's kind of annoying. Or you can go with the option I'm using on this, which is using a VFD, a variable frequency drive. Here's the five horsepower VFD that I picked up on Scamazon for $150. And the machine that I actually have is four horsepower, but I read you wanna overpower it so they don't have any problems when you're braking and stuff like that, when you're using the brake or you're changing the direction on the lathe. So this was the cheapest option that I could come up with. Actually, in some of my previous videos, um, when I retrofitted a knee mill, I used one and that was um, three horsepower and it worked out great, but I never did one on a manual lathe. Hopefully this works out good for us. I'll leave a link in the description to this right here. Like I said, this is uh, $150 for this one. Um, if you have less horsepower, they're cheaper. If you have more horsepower, they're a little bit more. So this should allow me to run 220 single phase into this and get 223 phase out of this back into the motor. So first things first on this machine, I have to track down the power that goes to that motor. Now this is the main power cord right here, runs into the electrical cabinet and powers the whole box, but it has other stuff in there that I think may need three phase, I'm not quite sure. But if it doesn't, we can run right into that wire right there and run it right to our VFD and then run our power right to the single phase and power this thing. So let's get into the electrical box and see what we got inside. So I can see inside of here, here's the power, I believe that goes out to that cord. And then the, the power comes in. And like I said, it goes to a bunch of different transformers and stuff. And that looks like single phase right there. But I believe that everything in here runs on single phase. And that's what that transformer is because it goes to the motor, which is three phase. And then it goes to this transformer, which I believe drops it down to single phase to run everything else. So everything else in here runs on 110 or 220 single phase. So I believe we could just wire into the main wire and everything should work. I'm not 100% positive, but that's a good place to start. So what I am gonna do is make a mount so that I can mount it right here on top of this box and we can just control the VFD from the front. So let me make a mounting plate for that. We'll come back, mount it on the machine. Okay, I got the little bracket made here. I got it bolted on. And what I'm gonna do is mount it like right here. Just use two self tappers into this thing so that we can control it from the other side here. Looks pretty good right there. 
I'll square it up and then what I'll do is just run my wires back, tuck them behind that and run them back down that way. All right, I got it mounted on here. I kind of decided to go at an angle so that when you're standing here working with it, you can just control it. So it's not like over like this. What I'm gonna do now is remove this old hard like house wire. I hate using this stuff. It's real stiff and just brittle and hard to work with. So I'm gonna remove this whole wire and I'm gonna use this SOOW cable that I bought that's rated for this machine. So what I'll do is I'll remove that cable there and then I'll run one going to the VFD from my 220 single phase and then run one from the VFD going back into right here and then we'll have our power. Okay, here's all the terminals behind this little panel right here. And this is where you wire everything up. And the markings are actually underneath. And if you take a picture, you can see what they are. And here in the manual, it shows us right here, if you want to do single phase 220 input, you'd go L1 and L2. If you want to do three phase 220 input, you do R, S, and T. So on our application, we're going to do L1 and L2 coming in from our 220 single phase. It's going to be that first one and that third one right there. And then wiring out to the motor here, you can see if you're doing three phase, here's your three phase. It goes U, V, W, P, E. So then that these go to the wire and this is your ground. And then after I get it wired up, we actually have to put parameters in it and tell this thing, hey, we're running single phase to three phase. And then we also have to tell it we just want it to turn on when you turn it on and be able to adjust how fast the motor goes up and down with this little knob right here, this little rheostat. Which on the other knee mill that I retrofitted and used one of these for that CNC machine, if you guys saw that video, what I did was just leave it, left it all the way up, that knob, and then I just controlled everything from the machine like it was from the factory. So that's probably what I'm going to do with this. Let me get this wired up and then we'll come back in and install the parameters. Okay, up here I've got my 220 single phase power coming in. Then I've got my 220 three phase power going out. I've got it going back into there. I've got the wire going into the top of this box here. I've got it going down and going right into where the original power wire was. What I'm going to do is turn this breaker on. So that's on, ready to go. I've got my breaker off over there at the main panel. I've got my 220 single phase wired in right here. Now what I'm going to do is flip the breaker and see what happens. Very worst case, the VFD should come on. And I don't think that it's going to be in the mode automatically where you just hit start and it just starts. Um, but it might. So let's turn this breaker on. Fingers crossed. Oh, I see the VFD here. And I hope you guys can see here. Uh, it looks weird in here, but we've got a 50 flash in here and a zero. So, I don't know. This is out of gear, so if I hit run, what will happen? Oh, there it goes. So I assume it's ramping up to 50. So I think the power switch is on. If I hit it, it should run. Uh, I actually forgot how you turn this on. Start. Oh, I hit the start. I hear it buzzing. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Oh, it was that easy. I really didn't even have to put any parameters in that thing. It's really just set up, ready to go out of the box. I guess when you wire it single phase for single phase of three phase, it just knows it. Um... So let's see, if I use the brake and I stop it and I go to start it again, will it trip out the VFD? That's what I'm wondering. Okay, so here's stop. All right, reverse, oh no. Yeah, it works like normal. So here's stop, start in the middle of the stop. So I'm really jamming a load on it when I do that. So I'm kind of going in the middle and then jamming it back up. That's it. That's as easy as it is. That's $150. It took me maybe, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes to do that total with making the bracket and doing all that stuff, as opposed to wiring three phase into your garage or getting a gigantic phase converter like I have over there, or just any phase converter in general because they're kind of a pain. You got to wire them in. Like a five horsepower, I believe, for this machine, you want to go higher so it wouldn't be five horsepower. It would probably be like, you know, seven or eight horsepower. You're talking about a thousand bucks and it only runs that one machine. So this is 150 bucks. You can go put this on every single three phase machine that you have and just run them off of these. Crazy. So now let's see though, let's do a little machining with it and 
see what kind of cuts we can take and see if it's just like it was on three phase. All right, so this is a little bit of aluminum here. Let's just uh, see what we get with this. Take a little bit deeper depth of cut here. See them break some big chips. There we go. Nice. So it works phenomenal with aluminum. Let's try some steel. All right, this is a big steel slug that I have laying around. Let's see what we get. Now we're into it. That's a healthy depth of cut right there. And it's not bogging at all. Nothing. What a beautiful. In summary, this machine machines just as good if not better than it did when it ran on three phase because i do have my phase converter here and i did wire it up to that but i just didn't want to do that every time like i said before and i know a lot of people that i sell machinery to are always confused about phase converters vfds and that type of thing helps clarify a little bit now this is a manual machine and cnc machines do have vfds inside of them but they all can't be ran on single phase but some of them can and if you look in manual, sometimes it'll tell you how to do that. So all in all, this solution for anyone that's in a home garage has single phase 220 like a dryer plug. You can run most three phase industrial equipment for cheap. You don't have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars. I will leave a link to this in the description below. If you guys enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe to my channel. Go back and check out some of my other videos. I really appreciate all the support you guys have given me. See you on the next one.